Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored Never Boring. Recently I launched the Always Bored Never Boring Members Club. Members get exclusive perks, including sneak peeks of what I'm working on, exclusive emojis and badges to use in comments on my videos, and access to polls that will help to determine what I will be covering in my videos. Recently, I held a poll asking which hero for Advanced Hero Quest I should paint, and our sort of brave, slightly battered warrior here was the winner. So today, we're going to get this chap painted up nice and quickly so he's ready to venture into a dungeon where he will probably die a horrible death. Before we start, I just want to say how much I like this miniature. The damaged sword with chunks out of the blade, the pompous headgear, and the slightly nervous, slightly vexed expression on the face. It's a wonderful character that really captures the feeling of Advanced Hero Quest and how gruesome and dangerous it is scrabbling for pennies in the dark. But enough about that, let's get painting. As you can see, I've spray undercoated with grey. This is Ghoul Grey from Colour Forge. I was tempted to go with a silver undercoat to speed up painting the armour, but I decided against it in the end. And we're going to start with the face. We're using Cadian Flesh Tone here and we're going to thin it down. This doesn't cover that well, but two thin coats should be enough for a solid colour to work from. It doesn't matter if you're a bit messy here, the surrounding areas will obviously get neatened up later. Once that's completely dry, we will switch to Reichland Flesh Shade and we'll apply a heavy coat to the face. This will pick out those details and shade the eyes. Then once that's dry, we can go back to Cadian Flesh Tone, thin it out and use it to highlight the raised facial details. If you really want to, you can try to dot in the eyes as well, but with the sunken eyes and pronounced cheeks and eyebrows, I'm not even going to attempt it. I will let the shade do the work for me. Next we are going to do the metal areas. For this we are using my old friend Lead Belcher. It's a really great metallic silver that I use all the time. We're going to thin it slightly and we'll apply two coats to all of the armour. That's the plate mail, the chainmail skirt and also the blade of the sword. We want to try and get these coats as smooth as possible. Of course we want to shade this armour so we can switch to Nuln Oil and we're going to put this on the sword and the plate mail. We aren't going to put it on the chain mail. Next we're going to use Dawnstone on the belt which I think works really well for leather. We need to use a thin brush here and apply the paint carefully so we don't get any over the armour. Then we are switching back to Nuln Oil and we're going to put a wash over the belt but also over the plate mail again to make sure it's dark and grubby. There's still some more we need to do to this armour. Next, just to break up that large area of plain metal, we're going to switch to Balthazar Gold and we're going to paint the rondels which are the two circular pieces of armour that are protecting the armpit areas. Again, we need to keep this paint thin. We don't want any lumpiness to the finish on this armour. We're also going to put the Balthazar Gold on the sword hilt. While that's drying, we can just go back to Dawnstone, really thin this down and do a little edge highlighting on that belt. This isn't strictly necessary, but it just finishes the belt off nicely. By the time we are finished with that, we can switch to everybody's favourite Agrax Earthshade. We're going to use this to shade the rest of the metal areas. So this will go on the rondels, the sword hilt and also the chainmail. Now at this point, I'm leaving the armour at that. You could, if you want to, go back and do edge highlighting on all those raised details. However, I want this armour to look dark, well used and dirty, so I'm going to let the washes do the work for me. So I'm going to replace my water, always a good idea when you are finished with the metallic paints, and then I'm switching to McCrag Blue. We're going to use this as the base coat for the arms and legs, and once again I'm thinning it down. You may need two coats. I'm applying two coats just to make sure I have a nice solid colour. With that done, I'm switching to Army Painter Blue Tone. This is going to shade the blue, but rather than dull it down or make it look dirty, it's going to make the blue more vibrant. Our knight doesn't have a whole lot of colour on him, so I want this blue to pop just a little bit. And for that reason, once the tone is dry, I'm going back to McCrag Blue and I'm really thinning the paint down a lot, and I'm applying it carefully as a highlight. So all of those creases and folds in the clothing, I'm just picking those out. And then I'm going to gradually mix in some Calgar Blue and apply successive highlights, with each one focusing more and more on the top ridges of the clothing. I'm doing three layers of highlights, which I think is plenty, but then I'm a lazy painter, so I would think that. Next we need to do the feathers. 
I've decided to do them blue as well, and I've picked Thousand Suns blue. I'm going to apply two coats of this, being careful not to get it over the helmet. Then we're going back to our blue tone, but this time we're thinning it. I don't want really strong shading on the feathers. One coat of that will bring out all the details, and then when it's dry, we're going to do a little bit of dry brushing. For this, we're going to put a little Temple Guard blue on our brush, then we're going to wipe almost all of it back off. Then we'll very lightly flick the brush over the detailing on the feathers, leaving a fine dusting of the blue over the raised areas. Next, we are moving on to the boots and gloves. Again, because I went so dark on the armor, I'm going to go for lighter colors here, so I'm putting down a base coat of Zandri Dust, two thin coats for a really smooth finish. Once this is completely dry, we are going to switch back to Agrax Earthshade, and we're going to use that for the recess shading. Nice and simple, just being a bit careful around the blue clothing. And then we will switch back to our thin down Zandri Dust for the final highlighting. And that is almost finished, but we do still have to do the base. I'm going to use the same approach I use for my Dungeon Quest miniatures, I will probably regret this because it's quite labour intensive, but what the heck. To get started, I've completely covered the base with Abaddon Black. Doesn't have to be a particularly smooth coat, just has to be a good solid coverage. Then we are going to use some Steel Legion Drab to block out some flagstone shapes. This will take two coats. You use the first coat to roughly mark out the areas, and then the second coat to neaten it up and get good coverage. And there's no rhyme or reason to the size and shape of the flagstones, just do what you think looks good. When that's dry, we're going to use Zandri Dust, thin down, to start highlighting the flagstones. We want to try and give the impression of the flagstones being three-dimensional, so we're going to be a bit scratchy with this highlight, but always making sure we leave some of the Steel Legion drab showing at the edges of each stone. Then we are going to get some Screaming Skull and mix a bit of that in with the Zandri Dust. A mix of about 3 to 1 should be about right. We are going to repeat the highlighting process, keeping it sketchy and keeping the previous layer showing. You can do this a couple of times if you want, adding in more Screaming Skull each time. When you are happy with it and it's completely dry, the last thing to do is put a very thin coat of Seraphim Sepia over the base. This will help to tie the colours together and grubby things up a bit. And that's that finished, but you have probably noticed our brave warrior doesn't have his shield. That's because I'm painting it separately. And I want this to look battered and well used. I've started off with a coat of lead belcher, and then once that's completely dry, I'm going to give it a coat of non-oil just to make the insignia pop. Next, we are switching to Thousand Suns Blue. We're going to get a small amount of it on our brush, wipe most of it back off, and then roughly stipple and dry brush around the edges of the shield. We don't want a solid coat of colour here, we want this to look rough. Then I'm going to use some Evil Sun Scarlet, and I'm going to carefully dry brush this over the Lion Insignia. We're trying to give the impression that this was once a very brightly painted shield, but it's been used a lot since those glory days. With that dry, we want to add some dings and nicks, so first we're going to use Lead Belcher. We're going to put a small amount of it on a scruffy brush that has bristles going off in all ways, and we're going to lightly flick that across the Insignia and the edges of the shield. And as we do that, it will leave little scratchy lines of silver behind. Then we are going to grab some Stormhost Silver, and with a very fine brush, we are going to add some extra little flicks. Finally, we are going to get our Agrax Earthshade, and we will run that into the deep recesses on the Insignia, and any little dents and scars. And I'm not too sure about this. The finished shield looks a bit rubbish, but that was kind of what I was going for, so I don't know if I've been successful or not really. Regardless, this is ready to attach to our warrior. 
Now, I was going to leave it at that, but I thought his face just needed a little something more. I wasn't prepared to have a go at those eyes, but the teeth were another matter. So I got some and Grey, thinned it down and used a really fine brush just to dot in a few teeth. It's a really small thing, but it does make a big difference to giving the face some character, especially with the eyes being so recessed and overshadowed by the helmet. But that is definitely where I am stopping. I just need to give this warrior a spray varnish and he is ready to die horribly at the paws of the nefarious Skaven villains. Thank you to all of the Always Bored Never Boring Club members for voting on which character I should paint in this video. You know your votes have already been tallied and who will be the subject of the next painting guide. And thank you everyone for taking some of your time to listen to me today. If you've liked the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really like the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.